Right, we instantly gonna start this tutorial. So make sure that you have Dino installed. They have some different ways for you to install it here. Me, myself, I did it with Homebrew. And then we go to the fresh homepage. We have some commands here to start a new project from scratch. But first, I just wanna show you this little application that we're gonna build. I'm gonna use something that's called the Owen Wilson Woe API. And it, it's an API that's yeah, probably quite useless to be honest, but it's quite fun. It will tell you how many woes Owen Wilson say in a movie. So you have all the movies that Owen Wilson has starred in, and it will tell you how many woes there are in that movie. So I think it's a pretty cool API because I think actually Fresh is, wow, I really like Fresh. I tried it out a little bit now, so it seems to be a good framework. So it looks something like this. I'm not going to style this in any way to make it cooler or anything, but we're going to show the movies here. And then you can click on a movie here. And then we can see the, the image for the movie and we have a video with a, a random woe from the movie. So the current woe is two and the number of woe is three. I don't know if you can hear this, uh, but we have a little video here because the API provides you with both the audio and a little video of the wow. And I'm using the video here. So that is how the application looks. Uh, and uh, we're going to start off on the fresh homepage, and they have this little command to bootstrap an application here. So dinoran-a-r, and then you have the URL to fresh dino.dev, and then you can name your product. So make sure to copy this and go inside of your terminal. Uh, and I'm gonna name this to uh, fresh-wo. And then it asks if you want to use Tailwind. Yeah, I think uh, we can do that. I'm not going to style this too much, but yeah, it's good to have it. And do you use VS Code? Yes. And product created. So CD fresh dash wow. And then I type in Dino task start and it will be up and running on localhost 8000. And you can see that it changed now. So we just have this little counter here. This counter is actually what's called an island because Fresh won't send you any JavaScript by default. Everything is server rendered as HTML files. So you just have to tell Fresh, yeah, this part here, I want this to be interactive and we want to use uh, JavaScript for that one. So we'll go back to the terminal, break it, and I'm gonna op up, open up the code editor. Uh, and I'm also gonna bump up the font size, something like that. So if we check this one out here, you can see that we have a folder that's called islands. And inside that one, there's the counter. I can just show you here, console.log. Whoa, save it. And I go back. No, I have to start it up again. Dino task start. So you can see that it says, whoa. And every time I click here, it says, whoa. But if I go back to another component here, for example, the page, inside of the routes. This is very similar to Next.js. You also have API routes where, we, where you want to create an API that returns some data or something. So it won't return a page. So you can see that they had this joke here and it's on the route API forward slash joke. And I'm gonna show you that also. But if we go here to the index, index page and here, for example, we type in console log index. We go back to our application and you can see when I reload the page, it doesn't say index here, it's only the woe. And that is because that one is server rendered. So if we check out the console, you can see that here, it says both woe and index, meaning that this island here is both rendered on the server and on the client. So we only have JavaScript for this little counter here. Uh, and we're not going to create any interactivity in that way in this little like, introduction to fresh. So, so we're not going to use this one here, but you essentially create a component just like you do in React. Fresh is using something that's called Preact, and it's a light version of React. So it's not really React, but you can use the same syntax. And this one here, you can just ignore this. They tell them themselves, you don't need to know what this does. It just makes sure that you can use JSX and stuff in your components. And this one is for Tailwind. You can see when you have a Tailwind class, you wrap it inside curly brackets because it's JavaScript and you have this TW where you send in a string literal where you have all your classes for um, Tailwind. All right, so this is the index page and we have everything ready for us to go. The Owen Wilson API is at owen-wilson-wo-api.fresh. 
herokuapp.com. So go back to the code and we can start off with the index page. Uh, we're not going to use the calendar. So we can remove that one. We don't going to have the image here either. So we're actually just going to have this one here and we can change this and we can change these classes here. P4, we're going to keep P-4 and then we're going to text dash sender. We're going to center everything here. But how do we get the data from the API? Well, inside of Fresh, you can create what's called handlers directly inside of your, your page here, or you can create your own API routes here as they did with the joke. And I said that I'm going to show you that one. So if we go here to our application again, so we have forward slash API, forward slash joke, and you can see that it gives us a random joke here. So that one will only return that data for us. It's not actually returning a page when we have an API route like that. Very much similar to the ones you have in Next.js. So we're not going to use this one here. We're going to create it inside of our component. So first, we're going to import handlers and the page props. And we do that from dollar sign fresh server.ts, like that. And then we can create our handler. So we export the const called handler. And this can be a function or an object. If you have an object, you create different properties with your gets and posts and stuff like that. Or if you just have a function, you can just have one of them inside of that function. But if you have an object like we're going to do here, you can have a lot of stuff inside of it as long as you create those properties for the object. So this is going to be of the type handlers. And as we're only going to return the names for the movies now on the, on the home page, inside of this generic here, we have an array that is a string. Or it can also be null. We're actually going to remove this one here. And then we have an object. And we create our async function called get. The first one we're not going to use, but we are going to use the context, the ctx. Inside, we have a const, the response, we await, fetch, and then we can check out here on the Owen Wilson API. How do we get the names for all the movies? Retrieve all the names of movies in which Owen Wilson says, whoa, okay. That's exactly what we're going to do, and it's a get that we created here. So inside, we have this string with the URL. And it's complaining now probably because we're not returning anything. So this will sort it out itself when we do that. So first we check if response.status equal 404. Then we return nothing. From the ctx.render, we're going to pass in null. Here we can call the fresh random method and pass in the props that we want to have on this page. So if it's a 404, we don't have any props and we just pass in null. Otherwise, we have our woe and it's going to be of the type array string just as above. And we await the resp.json, we convert it to JSON and we return ctx.render and we have the woe. And now you can see that this one sorted itself out. And this will hopefully send in all the movies as a prop to this home page. We can try it out now. So we just structure out the data. And we have the pay props type. It's going to be an array and string. Oops. Or it can also be null. So you can see here also when I hover over this, we have the params, we have the route and the URL that is passed into this page. In our case, we only need the data, and the data is going to contain the data from the handler. So that's the type here that we specified. It's going to be an array of strings, hopefully with the movies. And we have this div here where we re return something. So from the data, we can map through it. We have the movie. As this can be undefined, you can see that it added this question mark here itself. I make an implicit return. We actually need to have these parentheses here also around like that. And inside here, we return another div and we have an A tag, href. This one is going to route to the individual movie page when we click on it. 
And with this API, we actually have a way to fetch a, a specific movie with just the movie name. You can see here, uh, specify movie, retrie retrieve a random woe by the name of the movie it appears in. So this is the URL we're going to use for that one. So we can pass in the name of the movie. And we have that one here. The movie is just a string with the movie name. So that's what we pass into the href. And then we also type out the movie name, do some auto formatting, save it. We can go back to our application and hopefully this one will work. We're not going to be on the joke API. You can see that we have our movies here. And now when we wrote, we have the name here, but we haven't created that page. We need to create the dynamic page for this one to be able to fetch it. But you can see we don't have any loading state or anything here because it's server rendered. So this is rendered on the server and passed in as plain HTML to the client. So that's super great. And now we're going to create a dynamic route. We already have a dynamic route created here for us when we set up this product. So we're going to use this one. And just as with Next.js, you have uh, these square brackets and you name your variable here for the dynamic page. We can actually go back to the index and reuse this logic here for the handler. So go back to the name.tsx, paste it in. And we also need to import the handlers up here. And we're going to change this URL because now we're grabbing data from a movie, from a specific movie. So we go back to the Owen Wilson API and we have this specify movie here. So I copy this one, go back to my app, paste it in. We don't want to have the Zoolander movie, but we want this one to be dynamic. So I create backticks and then we're going to add in that uh, variable. So inside our async get here, we're going to destructure out the name. And that is because we name this name inside of the square brackets from the ctx.params. That is going to contain the name that we pass into this dynamic route. And instead of hard coding in Zoolander, we have a dollar sign and we have the name like that. And that will hopefully grab the data for us. The other stuff is the same here. So we don't need to do anything here. We need to change this type here because now it's not just a string. And I'm only going to type out the properties that I'm going to use. So export interface. Wow. I usually export my types when I create them here, if I need them somewhere else. In this tutorial, we don't need it anywhere else, but it's a good habit to export them so you can access them from where you want inside of your application. So we're going to need a movie. That's going to be a string. The current underscore woe underscore in underscore movie it's going to be a number and total underscore woes underscore in movie it's going to be a number also we have the poster it's going to be a string that's the url for the poster then we have the video and it's actually an object with different resolutions we're only going to use the 720p and it's going to be a string. So these are the properties that I've just grabbed from the API myself, and I typed them out here. And it's only the properties that I use. There are more properties for the movie if you want to check it out, but I'm not going to use them. So this one is going to be an array of wow instead of a string. And we're going to change that one here also. And this should be it for fetching the data. So we can go down to our page here. We're not going to call it greet. We can call it page, maybe. I don't know. Uh, and we can do some destructuring here of the data, just as we did before. And we can specify the page props a little bit more. So we have an array of wow, or it can be null. So that's our component. And we check if no data or data.length equals zero. Then we return maybe an h1 tag, length, uh, nothing found. So we handle this one if we don't have any data. Otherwise we return, yeah, we can actually remove everything here. So we're gonna return from the data, we're gonna map and we have the movie. So this is actually an array, even that you just fetch one movie. 
but that's fine. We can just map over it like this. And then we have the Rapidiv with a class. And now we're using Tailwind, so curly brackets, TW, and then we have backticks, and we have our classes P 4 MX auto and with equals 72. Just a little bit of styling here. And we also need to import Tailwind. So up here, import TW from at Tailwind or T Wind. Right. And now we can use it. Then we're going to have our image for the movie IMG class, curly brackets, double back ticks. I'm going to set the padding bottom to four for this one. We have the SRC. It's going to be from the movie.poster. We have the width. I'm going to set it to 320. So as I told you, not much styling here because that's not the point with this tutorial. I just want to show you an introduction to Fresh. Then we have a video element. The width is going to be the same. 320 and the height, we're going to set it to 240. And we want controls for it. Uh, and then we have the source. The SRC is going to be from the movie.video.720p. And then it auto formatted like this instead, but that's fine. We have a type of video forward slash mp4 and we self close it. So that's the video. Then we're going to have a couple of p tags with a class tw double back ticks text dash center padding top for this one is going to be four. We need to have the curly bracket. Then we have the current whoa and we get that one from the movie dot current whoa in the movie remove this one here and we can actually just copy this one and paste it in below we don't need a padding on this one and we can say number of woes and we have those in movie dot total woes in movie auto format it save it and go back this was quick but this one is a quick tutorial so yeah check out the code i have the link to a github repository below the video if you feel that it went a little bit fast here and now you can see that it works here and we have the woe and everything so this is how fresh works pretty neat i must say but why don't we have, yeah, we should probably have some padding here, at least on the video or, no, it's actually this one with the image, it doesn't work. And that is because I didn't add in TW. So there you have a little bit of padding. So you can see really, really fast and it's server rendered and all that. We don't actually have any javascript here sent to the browser probably because we don't use any interactivity it's just server rendered and it's super fast and it works great and i like fresh i think it hopefully will become quite big because it's pretty cool uh, so yeah this is my tryout of fresh for the first time here hopefully i see you in another video